Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of some of the weirdest traditions from around the globe. Now, when you think about traditions, you might picture cozy family gatherings, vibrant festivals, or even the simple rituals of daily life. But the traditions we're about to explore are a world apart from these familiar scenes. Prepare to embark on a journey that will take us from the lively streets of Spain to the picturesque landscapes of England, from the bustling cityscape of Hong Kong to the serene beauty of Iceland. Along the way, we'll uncover rituals that are as diverse as they are bizarre, from food fights and cheese rolling races to baby jumping festivals and radish carving competitions. We'll delve into the heart of these unique customs, shedding light on their origins and the stories that have shaped them over time. You'll discover that these traditions, while strange to us, hold deep significance for the communities that uphold them. They're not just quirky events, but a reflection of the rich tapestry of cultures across our world. So buckle up and get ready for a whirlwind tour of the world's most peculiar traditions. Our first stop takes us to the vibrant streets of Bunol, Spain. Here on the last Wednesday of August, a peculiar tradition unfolds that draws in participants from all corners of the globe. This event is none other than La Tomatina, a unique festival that could be best described as the world's largest food fight. This one-day event, steeped in history, began in the mid-20th century. Though its origins are somewhat murky, popular lore suggests a group of young people started a food fight near a vegetable stand, and the tradition simply stuck. Fast forward to the present day, and this small town swells with revelers ready to partake in this tomato-throwing frenzy. But before you start picturing a chaotic scene of tomato warfare, let me assure you, there are rules. The event officially begins when a brave participant successfully climbs a greased wooden pole to reach a coveted ham at the top. Once the ham is dislodged, a cannon fires, signaling the start of the tomato fight. Trucks laden with overripe tomatoes, specifically grown for this event, roll into the town square. Participants, donned in protective gear, eagerly await the onslaught, ready to hurl and dodge the squishy projectiles. The air fills with laughter, shouts, and the sound of squelching tomatoes, creating a spectacle that is as bizarre as it is entertaining. For precisely one hour, the streets run red with tomato pulp as locals and tourists alike engage in this playful battle. But the fun doesn't end there. Post-fight, the townsfolk come together for a massive cleanup operation, aided by fire trucks that hose down the streets, and participants returning Bunol to its pristine condition. La Tomatina is a testament to the power of tradition, community, and the sheer joy of letting loose. It's an event that transcends language and cultural barriers, uniting people in a shared experience of fun and camaraderie. Imagine being in the middle of a frenzy, surrounded by squishy tomatoes flying left and right. Next up, we roll over to Gloucestershire, England. Nestled in the heart of the Cotswolds, this county is home to an annual event that is as whimsical as it is thrilling, the Cooper's Hill Cheese Rolling and Wake. Held every spring bank holiday, the event sees daredevils from around the world chase a nine-pound wheel of double Gloucester cheese down a steep hill. The cheese, released from the top of the hill, can reach speeds of up to 70 miles per hour. But fear not, no cheese has been harmed during this event, as the wheel is encased in a wooden shell for protection. The origins of this tradition are shrouded in mystery. Some say it dates back to Roman times, while others believe it's a pagan ritual to welcome the arrival of spring. The truth? Nobody really knows, but that doesn't stop the fun. The event attracts a diverse crowd, from locals who've grown up watching the race to international visitors eager to participate in the cheesy chase. The goal? Simple. Be the first to reach the bottom of the hill, and you win the cheese. But let's be honest. It's more about the thrill of the chase than the prize itself. Despite its popularity, the event has seen its fair share of controversy. Concerns about safety led to the official event being canceled in 2010. But that hasn't deterred the cheese chasers. Each year, enthusiasts gather at Cooper's Hill, keeping the tradition alive, albeit unofficially. While the event might seem slightly mad, it's a testament to the spirit of community and tradition. The laughter, cheers, and camaraderie that fill the air on race day make the bumps, bruises, and tumbles all worth it. It's not just about chasing a wheel of cheese down a hill. It's about celebrating a unique tradition that brings people together from all walks of life. So whether you're a thrill seeker, a cheese lover, or simply a fan of quirky traditions, the Cooper's Hill Cheese Rolling and Wake is a spectacle not to be missed. It's cheesy madness at its finest. Now we hop back to Spain, where things take a peculiar turn with the Baby Jumping Festival. 
Known as El Colacho in Spanish, the Baby Jumping Festival is as peculiar as it sounds. This unique tradition hails from the quaint village of Castrillo de Murcia, near Burgos in Spain. Held annually since the early 17th century, the festival centers around a practice that might make the uninitiated gasp. Picture this. Men dressed as the devil, complete with yellow masks and red jumpsuits, leap over rows of newborn babies. That's right. The babies, who are blissfully unaware of the spectacle, lie on mattresses in the town's main square, swaddled in their best finery. But why, you may ask, would anyone jump over babies? Well, the tradition is steeped in religious symbolism. It's part of the Catholic feast of Corpus Christi, which falls 60 days after Easter. The men, or devils, represent evil spirits. By leaping over the infants, they are said to cleanse them of original sin, ensuring their safe passage through life. The festival is not without its share of controversy, of course. Safety concerns have been raised time and again, but the villagers staunchly defend their tradition. They insist that not a single baby has been injured in the centuries-long history of the festival. On the day of the festival, the air is thick with excitement. The devil-dressed men, known as Kolakos, run through the streets, whipping onlookers with horsehair whips. This is followed by the main event, the baby jumping. The spectacle draws crowds from far and wide, all eager to witness this bizarre yet fascinating custom. After the jumping concludes, the babies are sprinkled with rose petals and return to their parents, who watch the proceedings with a mix of anxiety and pride. The festival ends with a procession through the town, and of course, a grand feast. Talk about an unusual baptism. It's a reminder that the world is full of traditions that may seem strange to us, but are cherished and preserved by those who practice them. Heading north to Iceland, we encounter a culinary tradition that might make your taste buds tingle or cringe. Iceland, the land of ice and fire, is known for its stunning landscapes, and equally remarkable are its culinary traditions. Among them, Hakarl stands out, not just for its unique preparation, but also for its distinctive taste and smell. Hakarl is a traditional Icelandic dish made from a type of shark called the Greenland shark. Now this isn't your typical seafood dish. Uniquely, the Greenland shark is poisonous when fresh due to a high concentration of urea and trimethylamine oxide. To make it edible, the shark meat undergoes a fermentation process that lasts for several weeks, and then it's hung out to dry for several months. The result? A delicacy that's deeply woven into the fabric of Icelandic culture, a symbol of survival and resilience against the harsh Nordic environment. It's a dish that's often served during the midwinter festival known as Thoroblot. But what does Hakarl taste like? The flavor profile of this fermented shark meat has been described as an acquired taste. It's robust, rich, and has a certain tanginess to it. Some have likened it to a strong cheese, while others say it's more like very ripe camembert. And then there's the smell. Oh, the smell. The aroma of Hakarl is often the first challenge for those daring enough to try it. The scent is powerful, pungent, and reminiscent of ammonia. It's a smell that's hard to forget, much like the dish itself. Despite its notoriety, Hakarl remains an important part of Icelandic culinary heritage. It's a testament to the resourcefulness and ingenuity of the Icelandic people, who have managed to turn a poisonous predator into a prized delicacy. So, if you ever find yourself in Iceland, why not give Hakarl a try? Who knows, you might find yourself developing a taste for this unusual dish. It's a delicacy that's acquired quite the reputation for its pungent aroma and unique flavor. Our journey now takes us to the vibrant streets of Hong Kong for the Chung Chow Bun Festival. The festival, held annually on the island of Chung Chow, is an intriguing blend of culture, history, and of course, buns. Chung Chow, which translates to Long Island, is a small, bustling island off the coast of Hong Kong. Once a year, on the eighth day of the fourth moon in the lunar calendar, this island transforms into a hub of festivity and tradition. The Bun Festival, also known as the Bun Scrambling Competition, is the highlight of this celebration. The festival has its roots in the 18th century, when the island was plagued by a devastating plague. According to folklore, the local fishermen paraded statues of deities through the village, a ritual they believed would drive away the evil spirits causing the plague. Miraculously, the plague was eradicated, and the ritual evolved into an annual tradition, eventually leading to the Bun Festival we know today. The star attraction of the festival is the Bun Mountain or Bun Tower, a tall bamboo structure covered in sweet buns. These are not just ordinary buns, but lucky buns, stamped with the Chinese character for peace. The festival reaches its climax when competitors scramble up the tower, 
trying to collect as many buns as possible. The higher the bun, the more luck it is believed to bring. But it's not just about the bun scrambling. The festival also features a vibrant parade with children dressed as deities and mythical characters, suspended on poles to give the illusion of floating. Food is a significant part of the festival, and vegetarianism is observed throughout Changchao during this period. It's a gesture to appease the wandering spirits, ensuring peace and harmony on the island. Climbing towers of buns may sound like a carb lover's dream, but this tradition has deeper roots, celebrating the island's protection from pirates. The Chengchao Bun Festival is a testament to the island's resilience, a unique tradition that has stood the test of time, symbolizing the community's unity and shared history. Down in Mexico, Christmas Eve takes on a whole new meaning with the Night of the Radishes. As the sun sets and the Christmas lights begin to twinkle, a unique celebration unfolds in the heart of Oaxaca City. This is the Night of the Radishes, a tradition that dates back to the colonial period and has since become a beloved part of Mexican holiday celebrations. The tradition began when Spanish colonists introduced radishes to Mexico. Local merchants started carving these radishes into intricate shapes to attract customers to their market stalls during the holiday season. Over time, this creative marketing strategy blossomed into a full-blown festival that now attracts thousands of visitors each year. The night is filled with excitement and anticipation as artists, both young and old, gather to showcase their radish carving skills. The radishes used aren't your typical supermarket variety. They're specially grown, sometimes reaching up to two feet in length and left in the ground for months to achieve the perfect size and hardness for carving. Participants spend hours, often the entire day, meticulously carving these giant radishes into detailed scenes. The subjects range from nativity scenes and Mayan mythology to depictions of daily life and landmarks in Oaxaca. The creativity and craftsmanship on display are truly remarkable, turning this humble root vegetable into a medium for storytelling and cultural expression. Judges roam the market square, carefully examining each display. The competition is fierce, with prizes awarded for the most impressive and creative designs. But beyond the competition, the Night of the Radishes is a testament to the community spirit, a night where families and friends come together to celebrate their culture and history. As the night draws to a close, the market square becomes a vibrant gallery of radish art. Illuminated under the festive lights, these intricate radish carvings capture the magic and joy of the holiday season, showcasing the rich cultural tapestry of Mexico. Artists carve intricate scenes out of radishes, turning humble veggies into works of art. From a simple marketing strategy to a beloved Christmas tradition, the Night of the Radishes is a testament to the power of creativity and community spirit, a true spectacle that brings the holiday season to life in the most unexpected of ways. In Lopburi, Thailand, the Monkey Buffet Festival is a feast fit for, well, monkeys. This unusual tradition, celebrated annually on the last Sunday of November, is a tribute to the monkeys who dwell in the ancient ruins of the city and are considered a symbol of good fortune. The Monkey Buffet Festival began in the late 20th century as a way to thank the monkeys for drawing tourists to the city. The idea was to create an event that would highlight the harmonious relationship between humans and monkeys, and it quickly became a major attraction. During the festival, a banquet of more than 2,000 kilograms of fruits, vegetables, cakes, and candies is laid out in the central area of Lopburi. This spread is not for the human spectators, but for the city's primate residents. The monkeys are the guests of honor and are allowed to feast to their heart's content. These feisty creatures, primarily macaques, descend in droves from the nearby ruins and power lines to partake in the feast. They are far from shy, grabbing food with both hands and even stuffing their cheeks to store snacks for later. It's a sight that's both amusing and endearing, as the monkeys munch, crunch, and squabble over the feast. While the festival is a spectacle in itself, it also carries a deeper significance. It reflects the Thai people's belief in merit-making and giving back to nature. By feeding the monkeys, they demonstrate their gratitude to these animals who have become an integral part of their city. As the day winds down, the monkeys retreat back to their homes, their bellies full, leaving behind a scene of happy chaos. The Monkey Buffet Festival is not just about feeding the monkeys, but also about celebrating the unique bond between humans and animals and the shared spaces we inhabit. Locals and tourists alike gather to watch these mischievous primates indulge in a spread of fruits and veggies. It's a tradition that, while quirky, encapsulates the spirit of respect, 
gratitude, and coexistence that is deeply embedded in Thai culture. Traveling to Japan, we encounter the intense sport of botaoshi. This is no ordinary game, folks. Botaoshi, which translates to pole pulldown, is a team sport that is as thrilling as it is unique. Imagine two teams, each consisting of 75 players, battling it out in a bid to lower the other team's pole. The pole, standing at a lofty height of approximately 10 feet, must be defended by one team while the other attempts to topple it. The team on defense is split into two groups, the pole support and the fielders. The pole support team, as the name suggests, is tasked with keeping the pole upright. Meanwhile, the fielders form a protective ring around the pole to fend off the attacking team. The attacking team, on the other hand, employs a multitude of strategies to achieve their goal. Some members form a human pyramid to reach the top of the pole, while others focus on disrupting the defense. The game ends when the pole is tilted to a 30-degree angle. Botaoshi is not just about physical prowess, though. It's a game of strategy, where teams must coordinate their moves and tactics to outsmart their opponents. It's also about spirit and camaraderie, with each team member playing a crucial role in the success of their team. This tradition is most commonly seen during the sports festivals of Japanese military academies, particularly the National Defense Academy of Japan. It's a sight to behold, with the field transforming into a battleground of strength, agility, and strategy. Botaoshi is a testament to Japan's love for unique and energetic traditions. It embodies the country's spirit of unity, strategy, and perseverance. And while it may seem chaotic to the untrained eye, every move in Botaoshi is calculated and purposeful. So the next time you're in Japan during a sports festival, don't miss the chance to witness this spectacle. You'll be captivated by the intensity and passion that fills the air. Botaoshi is more than just a game. It's a thrilling tradition that showcases the spirit of teamwork and strategy. It's a game that requires strength, strategy, and a whole lot of teamwork. Now, we head to Malaysia for Taipusam. Taipusam is an intriguing Hindu festival celebrated predominantly by the Tamil community. Packed with a whirlwind of colors, music, and dance, it's the kind of tradition that stops you in your tracks. But what makes Taipusam stand out among the world's traditions is its intense spiritual devotion. Devotees prepare for this festival through a month-long fast, purifying their bodies and focusing their minds on God Murugan, the Hindu god of war. When the day of Taipusam arrives, devotees engage in various acts of devotion and penance. They carry kavadis, which are elaborately decorated structures on their shoulders and walk in a procession to the temple. But here's the twist. Some devotees pierce their bodies with hooks and skewers as an act of penance. The most striking of these is the Vel Kavadi, a large semicircular structure adorned with peacock feathers and attached to the devotee through 108 vels or spears, which are pierced into the skin on the chest and back. It's a visual spectacle that's as astounding as it is confounding. But it's not all about the pain and penance. Taipusam is also a time for community and celebration. Families and friends gather to support the devotees, cheering them on as they undertake their arduous journey. Music fills the air, providing a rhythmic backdrop to the procession. The streets become a vibrant canvas of color, faith, and devotion. Taipusam, while physically demanding, is a testament to the strength of the human spirit and the power of faith. It's a tradition that speaks volumes about the endurance, devotion, and resilience of the Tamil community. And so, as we leave the bustling celebrations of Taipusam behind, we're reminded of the incredible diversity of global traditions. Each one, no matter how unusual it may seem, holds a unique place in the cultural fabric of our world. It's a powerful display of faith and endurance. Finally, we land in Scotland, where pre-wedding jitters take on a whole new meaning with the blackening of the bride, this quirky Scottish tradition is as fun as it is messy, turning the ordinary into the extraordinary, all in the name of love and matrimony. Here's how it works. On a day leading up to the wedding, unsuspecting brides and grooms-to-be are kidnapped by their friends and family. Sounds like the start of a thriller, right? But it's all in good fun. The couple is then paraded around town and subjected to a barrage of unsightly, smelly, and downright icky substances. We're talking about things like eggs, flour, feathers, soot, and sometimes even fish guts. The messier, the better. But why, you might ask, would anyone willingly subject themselves to such a spectacle? Well, it's all rooted in good-natured symbolism. The idea is that if a couple can withstand this public display of humiliation and still come out smiling, they can handle anything that married life throws at them. It's a test of their mettle, resilience, and humor. 
And it's not all about the couple either. The blackening is often a community event, with everyone pitching in to make the day as memorable and messy as possible. It's a testament to the close-knit nature of Scottish communities, where everyone is invested in the happiness and success of the newlyweds. And let's not forget the aftermath. Once the couple is thoroughly blackened, they're usually tied to a tree or a lamppost. After a good laugh, it's the newlyweds' responsibility to free themselves and clean up. So, the blackening of the bride tradition may seem strange to outsiders, but in Scotland, it's a beloved ritual that brings people together and gives the soon-to-be-wed couple a good-natured roasting before their big day. Friends and family cover the soon-to-be-wed couple in all sorts of messy substances, ensuring they're ready for whatever marriage throws their way. And there you have it, folks. 10 of the world's weirdest traditions that showcase the rich tapestry of cultures across the globe. We've journeyed through the vibrant, tomato-strewn streets of Bunol, Spain, rolled down the steep hills of Gloucestershire, England, in pursuit of cheese, and leaped over babies in the name of tradition in Spain. We've braved the pungent aroma of fermented shark meat in Iceland, climbed bun towers in Hong Kong, and marveled at the artistic transformation of radishes on Christmas Eve in Mexico. We've feasted our eyes on a buffet fit for monkeys in Thailand, witnessed the intense sport of botaoshi in Japan, and admired the powerful display of faith and endurance during Thai Pusam in Malaysia. And let's not forget the messy pre-wedding tradition of the blackening of the bride in Scotland. Truly, our world is a fascinating place, filled with unique customs and traditions that may seem unusual to us, but hold special meaning and significance to the people who practice them. These traditions, as weird as they may seem, remind us of the diversity that makes our world so incredibly interesting. They are a testament to human creativity, and the lengths to which we will go to celebrate, to express ourselves, and to uphold the traditions that have been passed down through generations. So which one of these traditions surprised you the most? We'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you know of any other strange or unusual traditions from around the world, do share them with us. Until next time, stay curious.